The Daxamite's head snapped backwards, vertebrae crunching, as Ramos drove his knuckles into the alien's jaw, a casual smirk plastered across the grizzled veteran's face. Two of the alien's fanged teeth skittered across the beer-stained floor while Ramos reclined in the barstool, sipping his whiskey acting as if nothing out of the ordinary had happened. The crowd in the dimly lit establishment exchanged nervous glances and murmurs, most species reflexively leaning away from the deceptively calm human. An unseen narrator chuckled, his gravelly voice filling the room. I bet you pansies are wondering why that ugly daxamite is now passed out on the floor, keeping a real wide distance from Ramos there. It's the same reason every species with half a brain cell knows you never touch a human, not unless you want to end up dead or crippled. The narrator took a swig from his drink. It's a lesson the Daxamites learned the hard way some years back. See, the Galactic Council wanted to flex its authority, sending some peacekeeping force to Zephyrus Prime to handle a rebellion. The Daxamites, cocky bastards that they are, volunteered to spearhead the mission. Commander Tharos, arrogant little shit, laughed in Ramos's face when the human unit was assigned to his command. The narrator spat on the ground. Tharos spouted off something about humans being hairless apes and dead weight. Oh, if that fool only knew how wrong he was. But he was about to find out, and find out hard. The peacekeepers landed their shiny toy ships right in the middle of a fucking ambush, plasma and lasers turning the dirt to glass, while Tharos and his boys scrambled for cover like cockroaches when you kick over a rock. But Ramos and his men, they just cracked their knuckles and got to work. The narrator locked eyes with a terrified patron. You see, humans are born for war. It's in our blood. And if Tharos didn't get his act together real quick, he was going to find that out in the most painful way imaginable. The narrator took another long swig from his glass. Tharos had gotten himself pinned down like the rookie he was, backed into a corner with his fancy plasma rifle reduced to nothing but a sparking pile of scrap. But then... Who should come striding through the smoke like he was taking a goddamn afternoon stroll? None other than Ramos himself. Ramos crouched next to Tharos, flashing that trademark grin that promised both mischief and mayhem. Need a hand, big guy. Tharos glared, his pride warring with the very real possibility of having his brain splattered across the dirt. After a tense moment, he gave a curt nod. Just get me out of here, human. Ramos chuckled, low and dangerous. With pleasure. And with that, the two of them burst from cover, Ramos's team providing suppressing fire as they wove through the rebel lines like a pack of wolves. The humans moved with a fluid grace that Tharos had never seen before, their primitive kinetic weapons spitting death with every squeeze of the trigger. It was chaos, pure and simple. But amidst the flying shrapnel and the screams of the dying, Tharos could see that the humans were in their element. They thrived in this maelstrom of violence, their movements sure and their aim true. Tharos found himself begrudgingly impressed as he watched Ramos take down three rebels with a single burst from his rifle. The humans' tactics were unorthodox, bordering on insane, but damn if they didn't get results. As the dust settled and the last of the rebels fell, Tharos couldn't help but re-evaluate his initial dismissal of the humans. They were still inferior, of course, but perhaps they had their uses. The narrator leaned forward, his eyes glinting in the low light of the bar. But that was just the beginning. The real test came when they reached the rebel's stronghold, a fortress of steel and stone, bristling with enough firepower to turn an armoured column into molten slag. Ramos and his team exchanged glances, a silent conversation passing between them. Then, to Tharos's shock, they volunteered to infiltrate the compound. It was a suicide mission, plain and simple. Even the Daxamites, with all their vaunted superiority, would have balked at such odds. But the humans, they just cracked their knuckles and checked their ammo. Tharos, his pride stung by the humans' bravery, insisted on joining them. If these hairless apes thought they could outshine a Daxamite warrior, they had another thing coming. As they made their way through the winding corridors of the rebel base, dodging patrols and circumventing security systems, Tharos found himself 
constantly re-evaluating his preconceptions about the humans. Ramos, in particular, proved to be a constant surprise. The man was a walking contradiction, at once brutally efficient and strangely honourable. The rebel leader sneered, flashing razor-edged fangs. You pitiful creatures have stumbled into your graves. His claws tapped an ominous detonator gripped in his leathery hand. This fortress is wired with plasma charges, enough to vaporize this compound and the pathetic settlement huddled in its shadow. Ramos exchanged a glance with Thoros. The Daxamite's eyes were wide, his face pale. Ramos, there are innocents. I know. Ramos cut him off, his voice steady. He turned back to the rebel leader, a cocky grin spreading across his face. Cute toy. Compensating for something? The creature snarled. You dare mock me? I hold your lives in my hands. Ramos snorted. Please, I've had ex-girlfriends more threatening than you, and they were uglier too. As Ramos continued to taunt and provoke, Tharos caught a subtle hand signal. Realization dawned. The human was distracting the rebel, giving Tharos a chance to act. Tharos began to edge around the chamber, his eyes scanning for the explosive's control hub. There, nestled in an alcove, a tangle of wires and blinking lights. Ramos, meanwhile, was in full swing. And that's why you never bet against a Venusian in a drinking contest, but you probably wouldn't know that, seeing as you've got the brains of a concussed Gorbax. The rebel leader's eye twitched. His thumb stroked the detonator's trigger. Enough, you will beg for mercy before the end. Ramos raised an eyebrow. Mercy, sorry, fresh out. How about a knuckle sandwich instead? As the rebel leader sputtered in rage, Theros reached the control hub. His hands shook as he examined the alien mechanisms. He was a soldier, not a technician, damn it. But as he studied the device, he began to see patterns, logic in the madness. It was as if the human's inane babbling was somehow guiding him, showing him the way. With a final decisive movement, Theros yanked a critical wire loose. The lights on the hub went dark. The explosives were disarmed. The rebel leader's eyes widened in horrified realization. No, what have you done? Ramos cracked his knuckles, his grin turning predatory. What I always do, win. The rebel leader's reptilian eyes widened in shock as Ramos moved, the human's hands blurring with inhuman speed. One moment, the rebel's clawed finger was tightening on the detonator's trigger. The next, he was on his back, Ramos's boot planted firmly on his chest, and the detonator skittering across the floor. Tharos reached for his sidearm, ready to end the rebel's life, but Ramos held up a hand. Wait, he said, his voice calm but authoritative. Tharos hesitated, confusion etched across his face. Ramos, what are you doing? He's the enemy. Ramos didn't take his eyes off the rebel leader. Is he, or is he just fighting for what he believes in, just like us? The rebel snarled, baring his fangs. Don't pretend to understand me, human. You know nothing of our struggle. Ramos crouched down, bringing his face level with the rebels. I know more than you think. I know about the mining corporations that have been exploiting your people, stripping your world of resources and leaving you with nothing. I know about the Galactic Council's broken promises, the aid that never arrived, the pleas for help that fell on deaf ears. The rebel's eyes narrowed. How could you possibly know all that? Ramos shrugged. It's my job to know things and to find solutions. He stood up, offering the rebel his hand. Solutions that don't involve more bloodshed. The rebel stared at Ramos's outstretched hand, suspicion warring with a glimmer of hope in his eyes. What are you suggesting? Ramos smiled. A chance to be heard, a chance to make things right, a chance for peace. The rebel leader hesitated for a long moment, the tension in the room thick enough to cut with a knife. Then slowly, he reached out and grasped Ramos's hand, allowing the human to pull him to his feet. Tharos watched in stunned silence as Ramos and the rebel leader began to talk, their voices low and intense. They spoke of grievances and injustices, of the need for change and the possibility of a better future. As the minutes ticked by, something remarkable began to happen. The rebel leader's posture softened, 
his snarls and growls giving way to nods of understanding. Ramos, for his part, listened intently, his expression one of genuine empathy and concern. By the time they emerged from the compound, a tentative truce had been forged. The rebels, so long driven by desperation and anger, had agreed to lay down their arms and come to the negotiating table. The Galactic Council, Ramos assured them, would be ready to listen. Tharos shook his head in disbelief as he watched the rebel fighters stack their weapons and prepare for the long journey to the Council's headquarters. Ramos, I never thought I'd see the day. How did you do it? Ramos clapped Tharos on the shoulder, a grin tugging at the corner of his mouth. Sometimes, Tharos, the most powerful weapon is the one you keep holstered. The narrator leans back in his chair, his eyes gleaming with pride. And that, my friends, is why you never underestimate a human. We may not be the strongest, or the fastest, or the most technologically advanced, but we have a gift for understanding, for finding common ground, even with those we once called enemies. He raises his glass in a toast. To Ramos and to the power of human diplomacy, may we always strive to build bridges instead of walls. The narrator's voice grows heavy, the weight of memory pressing down on him as he recounts the final chapter of Ramos and Tharos's story. The sun-baked streets of Zephyrus Prime stretched out before Ramos and Tharos, the once proud buildings now riddled with blaster scars and rubble, the acrid scent of smoke still lingered in the air, a bitter reminder of the battles that had ravaged the city. Theros clapped a hand on Ramos's shoulder, his earlier disdain replaced by a newfound respect. Ramos, I owe you a drink. Hell, I owe you a whole damn bar. Ramos grinned, the corners of his eyes crinkling. I might just take you up on that big guy. But as they walked, Ramos's sharp eyes caught a glint of metal in a shattered window above. His battle-honed instincts screamed a warning. Get down, Ramos yelled, shoving Theros hard. The Daxamite stumbled, his bulk crashing to the ground just as a sniper's shot cracked through the air. Ramos jerked, a crimson stain blooming on his chest. Theros scrambled to his feet, his heart pounding. He cradled Ramos in his arms, the human's blood seeping into his uniform. Ramos coughed a wet, rattling sound. He looked up at Theros, a ghost of a smile on his lips. Guess I couldn't let you have all the glory, he rasped. Tharos shook his head, his vision blurring. Damn it, Ramos, why? But Ramos's eyes were already glazing over, his breath coming in short, sharp gasps. Tharos bellowed for a medic, his voice raw with desperation. They came running, their hands moving in a frantic dance as they tried to stem the flow of blood. But it was too late. Ramos, the indomitable human, the one who had laughed in the face of death a hundred times, slipped away beneath the unforgiving sun of Zephyrus Prime. The news of Ramos's sacrifice spread like wildfire. The Galactic Council, once so dismissive of humanity, now spoke his name with reverence. They held him up as a shining example of the courage and selflessness that defined the human spirit. For Tharos, the loss cut deeper than any wound. He had started this mission viewing Ramos as an inferior, a primitive creature unworthy of his respect. But now he knew the truth. Ramos had been his equal, his friend, his brother-in-arms. In the years that followed, Tharos dedicated himself to a new mission. He worked tirelessly to build bridges between humans and the other races of the galaxy, to foster understanding and cooperation in Ramos's memory. The narrator falls silent for a long moment, his eyes distant. Then he speaks again, his voice rough with emotion. That's why you never touch a human, not because they're weak, but because they'll touch you right back in ways you never could have imagined. He raises his glass, the amber liquid catching the light. To Eugene Ramos, a human who changed the course of history, not with his fists, but with his heart. The bar falls silent, every head bowed in respect, for in that moment they all understood the true power of humanity, not the power to destroy, but the power to heal, to hope, to sacrifice. Ramos had given his life for Theros, and in doing so he had taught them all the meaning of true friendship, of unconditional love. 
It was a lesson they would carry with them always. If you finish this story, please subscribe and like the video. Then leave a comment that says, I like the story, and I will heart every single one of them. It really helps me. Thank you for your time.